it's Iowa Prairie Girl. It's the end of October. It's almost dark out, uh, but I've been outside most of the day enjoying enjoying the nature. It's just been a lovely day. Um, I guess it's all how you perceive it. It really hasn't been that nice of a day, but I've been out enjoying nature. And one of the things that I've been watching today or looking at today are seed pods, uh, identifying uh, different flowers out in the prairie and in the woods and looking to see what they look like after they're done blooming. And one of the pods that's very easy to identify and one that uh, I like to look at are the common milkweed seed pods. So this evening I'm back into, on my land, this is the end of my garden, and I have a particular pot, spot in my garden where we don't plow it up because we know that that's where the common milkweeds are, gonna, are growing. And so you can see here we have the seed pods and they have busted open and they have their seeds coming out of them and it's just fun to watch them uh, come out and um, as they blow out in the wind and it's been kind of a breezy day and so I've seen a lot of uh, common milkweed seed pods blowing in the wind. So if you um, haven't been paying attention for the last, my goodness, five, six years, uh, it is common knowledge now in the nature world that uh, milkweed um, is a necessary plant for the monarch butterfly. And there's been a lot of programs out and about uh, promoting the growth of milkweeds. And two milkweeds that grow very common here in North Iowa are the common milkweed and the swamp milkweed. And then another milkweed that is a, a favorite of many is the butterfly milkweed, and that is the um, orange plant that you'll see out growing in a prairie in some places. So it is essential for the monarch butterfly to have the milkweed. Um, they they um, lay their eggs on it. They also eat um, the milk from the milkweed, which makes the uh, butterfly toxin to birds. It gives them a very disagreeable taste, and it only takes one butterfly per bird um, for the birds to identify that they're never going to eat one of those monarch butterflies again. It, um, it makes them very uh, distasteful to the birds. Um, so it is, like I said, the end of the blooming season, and we have these milkweeds popping open. And it's just fun if you have a, a kid, just take them out and show them how you can just let make those milkweed seeds um, uh, go into, into the air and how they disperse, especially on a windy day. Um, a milkweed pod, when it is mature, it will pop open. And I'm just gonna, here's one that's just starting to pop open, as you can see. And then the seeds, they turn a, uh, a dark coffee brown color and that means that those seeds are mature and they are ready to fly away and grow somewhere else next summer. Now if you want to you can also keep those seeds. They do have a tendency of getting moldy so you want to store them in a brown paper sack and not in a plastic sack. And here they go. Isn't that fun? Fly away milkweeds. Okay. So this floss is one of the things that I really wanted to talk about, though. So here we go again. So in World War II, children would go out and they would collect the floss. It's called floss or fluff. It's also called coma. And they would collect this and it would take several pounds, kind of like that one uh, riddle that you tell people. How many pounds of feathers does it, um, or how many feathers does it make to make a pound? Um, and so they would collect the floss from a milkweed, and this floss would then be used for uh, life jackets in World War II. And so children would collect it, and they would make life jackets out of this, or they would also use it to line um, uh, winter coats and other things that the, the military used. Now, milkweed floss has been used for many things before World War II. Um, it was used to make pillows and mattresses. And apparently it's very, very, um, it's very warm. It's almost better than using uh, goose feathers. It's hypogenic, uh, how's that word? You don't get an allergy to it. Um, and uh, it's water resistant as well. So it's, and it's very soft. I read that they also, you can make a, a thread out of this and um, they use it to, used to, or they have used it to make very soft socks with, with the milkweed fluff. So it's very useful um, in many different ways. And I just was reading that there's a, there's a person that is um, promoting the um, planting of milkweeds 
so uh, that we would have more, so we could harvest more of this this um, floss, and we would use it more um, in winter coats. And also, they've used it; they've tried to use it for cleaning up of oil spills. Um, so, not only is the milkweed good for butterflies, but the um, the floss is very uh, useful as well. All right, so we'll just kind of send some more of these milkweed seeds on their way. This is my land, so I'm kind of dispersing my own milkweed seeds. Um, I let milkweeds grow wherever they wherever they pop up. If you're like me, you might have walked beans in the '80s um, and pulled milkweeds um, in the in the uh, bean fields for the farmers. Um, that doesn't happen too much anymore. We don't walk beans anymore because of Roundup Ready crops. Um, you also might have, um, where was I going with that? Oh, I was gonna talk about butterflies. Do you remember when you were a child or as an adult in the 70s? I remember my dad was a traveling salesman and we would wash my dad's car and uh, the front grill was always full of bugs and moths and monarch butterflies. And I can't tell you the last time that I um, washed my vehicle and had a monarch butterfly in the grill. Um, although the monarch butterflies are making a, a huge comeback with, um, with the planting of milkweeds and the planting of other prairie flowers. So this is the Iowa Prairie Girl. It is October, the sun is setting, and we've got milkweeds flying everywhere. So just because the summer's over doesn't mean that you can't get out and enjoy the wonderful things in nature. I encourage you to get out, um, still be hiking, still be looking at things out in nature. Uh, stay tuned. We'll never know what I might come up with next. This is Iowa Prairie Girl. I hope you see the wonderful.